all got abs. <laughs> Oh my God, dude. Look at that boy, bro. He just like me for real. He just like me for... What's up, guys? Omni here. You guys know how it goes. Another day, another video. Last night, I tweeted, I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? Hey, yeah, guys. Today is Thursday, March 17th. Uh, we are more than halfway through the month of March. Uh, daylight savings time has officially gone by, so I think we lost an hour, I think, last weekend. And uh, yeah, man, we're coming into spring. The weather keeps hip-hopping. We'll get like 70 degree weather one day, and then it'll drop down to like 30, and it will get some snow at least over here on the east coast i don't know about you guys but yeah other than that i'd say it's business as usual our last video was on monday so we had like tuesday and thursday and monday evening to catch up on some uh, more news so i got a lot to talk to you guys about today casual reminder guys if you are watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet that would be super dope just hit that button really fast so you can continue watching this video drop a like if you already subscribed and you like the content and uh yeah sit back relax put your feet up and allow me to lay it on you but guys before we get into today's topics i'm happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by raid shadow legends guys I know you've heard about Raid Shadow Legends. It's the first game to bring a console level experience directly to your phone. Explore millions of champion combinations and develop countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon rooms, campaign battles, and PvP arena. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. There's two specific champions, guys, that I really enjoy using. First, there's Sissy of Flame Tongue, who's a hot demon spawn lava mommy who wants to see the world burn. Literally. Her skills allow her to nuke and debuff the entire enemy team with a burn prop, making her an absolute staple to any team comp. I've also been digging this other champion named Roxum, who's a lizard assassin. His skills let him weave in and out of battle by hitting really hard, while also allowing him to avoid incoming damage by making himself untargetable. This guy's pretty dope. So yeah guys, what are you waiting for? Come join me and play. This is the best time to get started in raid. And if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen that you see right now, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Ina, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you guys right here, but it'll only be available for the next 30 days for all new players, so you gotta act fast. Like I said, click the link in the description below or scan that QR code, and again, special thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. So guys, let's speed run some shorter topics just really fast without off the bat, okay? Things that you really need to know, kind of big deal but you know it doesn't require me to spend like hours and hours talking about it. like this one right here from my boy chef back who said the new puss and boots sequel if you guys don't know it says here from disgusting film uh first look at the long-awaited puss and boots sequel the film releases september 23 in theaters which is a big deal man puss and boots i think the, the original one came out a very 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 long time ago puss and boots being the cat from shrek obviously i know you guys know this and uh, yeah i looked at the trailer it looked really really good it played on the concept of puss and boots having like nine lives because he's a cat and then he only has like one life to live and now he's trying to figure out how to live his life it looks really freaking good i mean like it's not new shrek but it's it's puss in boots so I, i'll take that another quick update if you guys don't know final fantasy origin or is it origins one of the two anyway <laughs> it's this crazy final fantasy game featuring this dude who basically just yells i want to kill chaos chaos i want to kill chaos it's so funny if you watch any of the clips of this game stranger of paradise final fantasy origin if you watch any of the clips it looks absolutely wild it looks like almost like a parody at this point but it's so funny and so goofy and so weird the concepts the conversations that you kind of want to play it more anyway by you said so omni you ready to kill chaos the score is surprisingly good and my boy nebellion dropped out some of the prizes for the game or some of the uh, scores for the game and uh yeah it looks like it got 8.5 8.2 888 uh, 7.2, 3.5, 3, 2.5, uh, enemy gave it a 1, but Metacritic was 73, not too bad, I thought this game was going to be an absolute flop, but it looks like it, uh, it, it won't, it would be an absolute not plop so yeah definitely gonna have to play this game i'm a huge final fantasy fan so i got to play the game just for the sake of playing it i'll probably be streaming it on twitch.tv slash inferno omni if you guys follow me on there and uh yeah stranger of paradise final fantasy origin is available for you guys to play also in gaming news what you guys need to know my boy Cosimo told me that elden ring is doing numbers you guys know elden ring just came out and everyone's been playing that thing and, and crying and dying <laughs> and uh yeah it's basically officially out that elden ring has sold over 12 million copies worldwide in less than a month 1 million units sold in japan 12 minute 12 million units sold worldwide uh this is astronomical because if i am correct uh, i believe uh dark souls 3 i think it took about three years for it to sell like 
10 million. So for this to sell like 12 million units in literally one month <laughs> is absolutely wild. This game is so wildly successful and still highly talked about and highly rated, getting perfect scores on almost everything. Probably going to get game of the year. It's one of those games that was highly acclaimed. People were expecting to, to watch it and play it, and it actually came through and satisfied. So people are really happy about that. And I think they're doing so well that Elden Ring actually might start branching out of actual video games and making other forms of content as well. I don't know if that's going to be movies or TV shows, something like Riot's doing with uh, League of Legends, but you love to see it happen. I still need to finish that game and, and continue streaming it on twitch.tv slash Infernal Omni, by the way. Quick update in case you guys didn't know, Nahome said Jujutsu Kaisen movie comes out today, and yeah, I'm going to watch it. I already have plans to uh, watch it with some friends this evening. I'm super excited and hyped to watch it. I probably should have rewatched uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, but whatever. I'm just going to jump into it, and then I'll rewatch Jujutsu Kaisen at another time, but I'm excited for it. Jujutsu Kaisen came out being one of the best animes of the season when it did came out. I was not expecting to watch what I did watch. So yeah, I'm expecting to watch this movie. And if you guys want to watch it, check your movie theaters, your local ones. It's not always very apparent because it's like anime. It's like subtitled and dubbed. So you got to be careful which one you want to watch. Pay attention. It's usually not out uh, for a long time. So if you do want to catch it in theaters, you gotta act fast. Also, what you probably need to know, my boy Will Phoenix, he said the Senate unanimously passed the Sunshine Protection Act to make daylight savings times permanent. Bro, is that real? First of all, why? <laughs> Second of all, if that does happen, that would be absolutely crazy, dude. Because I mean, I've been having daylight saving time since I've been born, right? But they're, they're talking about getting rid of it. I mean, I, I like, I hate it when it goes forward because I feel like I lose an hour, but I love it when it goes backward because I feel like I gain an hour. It's one of those, you know, mind games and tricks. And also, I like it because like there are certain mornings when you wake up and it's completely dark, right? Which might be okay because then you have a very brighter evening. But then there are some mornings when you wake up and it's completely completely bright but as soon as it gets like five o'clock it's just you know gotham city dark so you know it's like you get two of those halfway through the year but it looks like now we're only going to get one of those versions because they're trying to well take it away i'm not going to lie i was reading this and i i'm kind of confused <laughs> <laughs> it says days with sunrises before 7 a.m days with sunsets after 5 p.m if we keep daylight savings time as it exists this is what it looks like but i don't get it if we got rid of daylight saving times i i kind of don't really get it because if we use daylight savings time all year long it's dark but like doesn't it like hop between one hour and two i don't i don't really get the graph i'm too stupid to understand it but just in case you guys know daylight savings time is uh it could potentially be permanent and if it does become permanent and if biden signs off on it i'll let you guys know guys rest in peace to a freaking legend we lost a big guy today uh sanchin kelson said the passing of wwf and wcw icon scott hall razor ramon god Dang, man. Rest in peace. It looks like he passed away. He was 40, 62, only 63 years old. I'm not sure what the cause of death, but man, God dang, that's uh, that hits kind of close to home, man. I used to play all the WWF and the WCW games, and I used to watch a lot of it as WrestleMania as well. And seeing Razor Ramon was just somebody that's super iconic, somebody that I saw a lot in my childhood, and uh, he passed away. So just want to say uh, rest in peace to uh, Razor Ramon, man, and, uh, you know, farewell to a legend. Also, quick news and in movies and what you guys need to know, I guess gaming as well, but Phantom said, the new Sonic Movie 2 poster referencing the box art of Sonic 2. Guys, Sonic marketing design has been killing it. Ever since the internet has decided us, we bullied them into changing their OG design of what they were gonna be doing terrible with Sonic. I don't know if you guys remember when Sonic looked like a freaking like alien gerbil, and then they finally flipped him back to look like something good. Ever since then, they've been taking W after W after W with these movies, and basically listening to what we have to say, and actually making like design arts that are basically like from the box art from the actual games, making it canon, doing it right. This is how you make video game movies. I wish they could somehow do this with anime, but this is how you do it with video game movies. So as you guys can see, this is the OG Sonic 2, the Hedgehog box art. You got Dr. Robotnik man, Eggman over here grabbing the number two with his big old chubby fingers. It only looks like he has four of them, or maybe he has his, one of his pinkies on the tie. I don't know. And then you got your boy Sonic and Tails sitting there with the arms crossed with the esports pose, you know, looking dope. But if you go back to this new one, they got almost the same thing going on. They got my boy Jim Carrey, which I'm still happy that Jim 
Jim Carrey is like Dr. Robotnik. I'm, I'm just so happy. I, I love Jim Carrey so much. Can we just have a, a quick two second appreciation thing about Jim Carrey? Because that's my guy. Anyway, got his big old stubbly fingers as well on top of the two, which looks so freaking good. You guys already know that Sonic 2 is going to be featuring um, Knuckles, aka your boy Idris Alba. So that's going to be pretty hot as well. You got Tails in the back with his hands crossed with the one eye. You got Sonic up front with his lightning shoes. I'm excited. It's going to be in movies April 8th, which is about a month and a half from now. So yeah, guys, this is, you know, just basically people doing it right when it comes to Sonic marketing franchise. Sonic fans are eating so good right now. I know you guys went through a long drought where, you know, Sega fans, Sonic fans were just, they were suffering. Y'all were suffering. Y'all been suffering for years, man. And now your time is finally here. You're getting this game. You're getting Sonic Frontiers. You're going to be getting another Sonic movie that's going to probably have either Shadow or or Metal uh, Me Mecha Sonic or Metal Sonic, whichever you want to call it. You're going to be eating really good for a very long time. I'm happy for y'all. And I feel like, I mean, I'm a part of it as well. I'm just low-key Sonic fan. I've just been sitting inside playing Sonic Mania all day. That's kind of how I am. But yeah, Sonic to the movie, guys. Let me know how you guys feel. So Sync Jaws. Hey, yo, my hoodie is finally out. Is Are you for real? Are you for right now? Your comfortable hoodie that's shipping out right now. And it's a picture of Sync Jaws wearing the freaking hoodie. Dog, no way, dude. It's finally... I, how did y'all get the hoodie before I did? <laughs> I ordered that joint frame run it. I think mine is still out somewhere for shipping or something like that. Here's my boy Heffelmeyer. He said, Omni, it's too cozy. I passed out immediately wearing Omni. And man, it looks good. It looks really good. I'm so happy. It looks really good on you guys. I think the fabric material is supposed to be done up in a way to make you guys feel a little bit more comfortable and cozy. It's an indoor hoodie. I, I, I realized when I made this hoodie, I didn't think about the concept. It's like, this is not one of those hoodies that you probably go out to like a party and be like, yeah, I sleep, you know? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's normal casual wear, it's just something to kind of support me as well. But if you guys don't know, I dropped uh, this hoodie. If you guys want to now, it's shipping immediately. It's available for shipping. So if you buy it now, it'll start shipping really, really fast at wearitomni.com. I think we are like about 50% plus uh, in terms of inventory left. So we don't have much left over. And I think by the end of the month, it's going to be completely gone. And I don't know if this is going to ever do come back. But if you guys want to support the channel and help me, uh, yeah, wearitomni.com and uh, just come through and buy a hoodie or two. And then, you know, that'll be really dope but yeah thanks guys if you guys do have the hoodie take pictures of it and i'm going to be showing pictures of it in the videos going forward usually at the beginning or whenever i can because i'm definitely got to represent you guys so guys i got a package from youtube yesterday and i don't know what it is but i'm going to open it uh demon danny said the only way to truly stop internet drama is to become a god and this is a picture that i had taken yesterday <laughs> as you guys can see in the background is the youtube book i had to block this with a book because uh you know it has my address and everything on the front but yeah uh you know, got the death note right here in the front but yeah i have it i have it right here i got it i, I can't show you I'll, I'll show it to you without showing the address there there it is all right without showing my address okay there it is don't be trying to look out got creeps anyway uh i got a package and i think i'm going to go ahead and open it uh sometime this weekend and i might just actually just drop an individual video for you guys uh this weekend maybe even saturday or sunday my goal is to do like two news video segments for you guys and then have at least one video for you guys on the weekend where it's just kind of solo dela we're doing either a solo topic or whatever i want to talk about i think that's what i'm going to try to do i keep saying what i'm going to try to do but i don't actually do it but yeah i'm rambling got a youtube box i'm going to do an unboxing if you guys want to see what youtube sent with me when i uh make this video then uh yeah be expected to watch a new type of video drop up in your subscription feed very soon so guys okay it's finally freaking happening okay saw but youtube a lot of you guys told me man we finally got an update to freaking friday night funkin uh the fnf week eight trailer is out and it looks amazing also i love your videos omni thanks man i appreciate it we got a video from phantom arcade i haven't watched it i am officially going to react to this video it's only 20 seconds I'm officially react to this video and you guys don't know i'm huge friday night funkin fan when it comes to friday night funkin is a game where you basically press up down left right arrows but then you're funkin at the same time it's good music and it's good lore and it's 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 so freaking good my second channel omni but stronger my gaming channel was basically became a friday night funkin uh channel because i loved playing that game solely so much <laughs> uh but yeah i'm gonna watch this and react to this uh video with you guys really fast i'm already getting live i'm already getting high bro wait 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 what am i seeing there's a lot of sneak stuff there's a lot of sneaky stuff happening in the background Pico day, 4.30? Wait, 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was that abs? Hold up. Did I see that? I think Pico got abs. Oh. Oh. Okay. Who's that? That's not the girl who, like, she did. Pico got abs? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Look at that boy, bro. He just like me for real. He just like me for Nah, I'm gonna save my abs for an OnlyFans. Only if only a few of y'all will get catch that glimpse. Yo, Pico got abs. I don't know why that's like the highlight of the trailer for me. It looks so good, man. Oh my god. Again, I'm really huge into Friday Night Funkin'. Everyone kind of blew off on this. I'm excited to see that the team has finally made some updates. I don't know exactly what we're gonna get on 4 30 2022. It's gonna be Pico Day, but I'm gonna be watching it. Actually, Pico was one of my favorite songs too when I was playing the game. I was playing it on a hard mode. I think it was a B-side tape. Pico B-side was absolutely one of my favorite songs, bro. I love Pico. Anyway, let me stop. Uh, <laughs> uh, this Friday Night Funkin' 4.30. I will be back. I will be playing it. It's been a long time. You guys have been asking me to play the mods. We come back around that time and I'm going to be gearing up and playing all the mods left just to get ready for this, just for the comeback. The comeback kid is back. I will be taking my place as the Friday Night Funkin' King of the internet when this returns. So guys, uh, we need to talk about this just really fast. Uh, Hu Tao Simp said Japan was hit with a bat to back earthquake. This was yesterday. One was a 7.3 magnitude. Holy crap, that's pretty huge. While the other ones was a 6.5. God dang, back to back. And a lot of uh, YouTubers that I know who live in um, Japan, like uh, my boy Sea Dog and uh, Joey and uh, like Garnt, all of them, those guys who live there on the on the East Coast, basically made tweets talking about it. And I think there's something underneath here as well. It says, uh, here is also a video from both Akudaris the Anime Man during the earthquake. Okay, oh so they God. probably feel the earthquake now. Joey. They're just shaking. I thought that was the camera shaking. Jesus. Everything is just moving. If you don't come here, if you don't go really fast, bro. Nervous. I'm nervous. I mean, I know they're gonna they're gonna be okay. Jesus Christ. Jeez. And yeah, guys, from what I understand, I don't think the damages were extreme when it came to Japan when this is happening. But man, you always gotta be careful with these these earthquakes when it comes to Japan, man. They they can get really scary really fast. I don't know how they was keeping their calm, because I would have been freaking out. I would have been yelling and screaming, dog. Like <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Japan, uh, two earthquakes, man. I'm glad that everyone uh, is okay. I don't know if anything else happened outside of damages. I didn't see anything breaking on it. It was breaking, but it didn't show like massive damages or anything like that. So I think that's good news, but yeah. So guys, what in the heck? <laughs> <laughs> YouTubers be doing the most sometimes for clout. Do anything for clout. They do anything for clout. Yo, Shadow Knight said a YouTube couple possibly facing up to seven years in prison for a YouTube 24 hours and target video. God dang. Imagine being a YouTube couple. You guys both go to freaking jail and then you're going to get another couple, if you know what I mean. Um, the YouTube couple arrested after hiding in a Target store overnight in a prank vid by Insider.com. Can I even click this without it being like, uh, like ad blocked or something? And yeah, it looks like I can. Let's scroll down and read. This article reads, a couple who stayed at Pennsylvania Target overnight. Pennsylvania Target? I, <laughs> I know a lot of people who live in Pennsylvania. I actually know some YouTubers who live in Pennsylvania. Don't tell me it's them. Don't tell me it's them. Overnight for their YouTube channel is now facing up to seven years in prison for a prank. Police said the YouTube couple, 24-year-old Charlotte Fisher and 25-year-old Johnson LaRose, nah, I don't know who those guys are, dubbed Saucy and Honey, were arrested and charged with conspiracy and third-degree criminal trespassing. Bro, it was just a prank, bro. <laughs> What did they try to do? Did they sneak into Target and they just hide there? And they were just going to be like, okay, we're in Target for 24-7. And we're going to see what happens if we get out. Like, you ain't staying up that entire time. You're going to fall asleep eventually. Quote, I mean, no regrets, just living life and having fun. It's kind of sad that it's all come out to this. We were expecting a fine, nothing crazy, Fisher told the news station. Police responded to the Target location in Chester County on February 21st after alarm went off. Upon arrival to the scene, police said they did not find anything in the establishment the outlet reported. So wait, 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 wait. Alarm went off. They got caught. They got Metal Gear Solid, right? They got snaked. You know, bring. 
and then they came, the police came to find them, and they couldn't find them because they were still hiding? Is that what happened? However, the following day, security footage reviewed by employees showed the couple and the target prompting an investigation. Fox 29 reported that the duo was filming a 24-hour overnight challenge in Target for their subscribers. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Yo, imagine just being like, hey, let's commit a freaking crime for a YouTube video. Um, the video shows the couple hiding boxes before employees left for the night and roaming around the dark store with their flashlights. At one point in the video, the couple said they took a nap behind their box fort. Although per the video, the couple said they were going to remain in the store for 24 hours, they left the building through an exit at about 3 a.m. setting off the alarm. So okay, they were going to do the whole 24 hour challenge, they noped out, and it, they should have stayed. They should have just stayed. If you're going to do it, if you're in there, you're stuck. You might as well go for it and go for it, bro. Like, you got to know if you leave, it's going to set off an alarm. So they eject Osido out of the challenge at 3 a.m. Anyway, last paragraph about it. Police said Fisher and LaRose then returned to the store about 8 a.m. to wrap up the video. So they came back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> to get that ending hey guys here it is target we made it you know i wonder if they lied and said we did it we made it we're out it's 8 a.m the report noted that they did not take any merchandise from the store according to the report their bail conditions restrict them from going to any target locations in the state man you got to go to walmart now the pair is set to appear at hearing on march 24th that's in seven days from now police said that a couple had about 17,000 subscribers when this video was released now they have over twenty thousand dollars. so there you go you get to go to jail for potentially seven years for 3,000 subscribers, bro. Oh, oh, you hate to see it happen. Anyway, yeah, I came to their YouTube channel, Saucy and Honey. They had 22,000, so they got they got 5,000 extra subscribers from this, man. Yo, so, hey, bro, I mean, <laughs> they have those videos, those couples videos. I finally got a BBL with a finger pointing. Jollibee, I've never been to Jollibee. I literally just had a friend talk about Jollibee yesterday, and I was like, well, what is Jollibee? I've never been there, and they were telling me I have to go try it out. I love me some fried chicken. It looks like it's a fried chicken joint. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they were making some consistent videos praying stuff like that with their friends and all that jazz and what the heck my girlfriend called me getting top in her oh my god okay all right y'all deserve to go to j <laughs> anyway y'all that's the story of these youtubers basically going to jail for making a prank video rip i'll let you guys know what the court says in seven days i, I hope they don't have to go to jail okay i mean Pranks, yes. Criminal, I guess, is activity, but the intent was not there. We can't let people get away with... I cannot get over the fact that there's a thumbnail right here talking about my girlfriend calling me getting tired. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let me know how you guys feel about this situation. So guys, we got some VTuber drama here. Again, did you guys been telling me about a lot of you guys asked me to talk about this? And I have no idea what the freak is going on. Uh, it says, uh, Quackle said, the, the Sarui drama. I don't even know if I'm saying uh, their name right. Sarue, Sarui. I'm just going to say Sarue drama where one of her mods were being dis disrespectful towards the disqualified attendees and Sarue handled it poorly. Oh, OK, OK, OK. I kind of I did see a conversation about this on Twitter. It was two of them. For one, I understand uh, Sarue VTuber. I believe she was trying to hire people for, I think, her YouTube, trying to hire some editors. And I think the response that she made back to it was extremely, extremely, extremely rude. And now there's something else going on with it as well. And then from what I understand, it's been piling up. People have receipts and receipts of basically all of these bad conversations and context going on with, with this VTuber. Uh, well, I guess let me read this tweet for you guys. This tweet from Karu says, I'm extremely disappointed with the way Sarue dealt with the disqualified participants and how her moderator responded when I messaged them, I just wanted to know why I was disqualified and why I wasn't contracted prior to the stream. This effing hurts. What, what happened? What, 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 what? Here we go. You guys can't see the whole text, but I'll read it out for you. It's from this girl named uh, Karen Rook. Said, hello again. I've been trying to reach Sarah via email and Twitter, but I haven't gotten a response or an explanation as to why I was disqualified and why I find out by watching the stream instead of being contacted beforehand. I also found out that there is at least one more artist who was disqualified, weren't contacted about the reason why either, and they haven't gotten an explanation either. And then she keeps talking 
in and talking about is there something you can do to help me get in touch with Saroy and the reading down. I'm sorry for the long message. I'm just very upset about what happened and that Saroy has not given us any sign or indication that she has seen our messages. It's extremely disappointing and disheartening. I worked on my art for an entire month and then watched and waited through Saroy's stream, scared, excited, and oh, hopeful, only to find out I was just kicked out. If at the beginning of the stream she had shown the disqualified art and said, these ones will not be included in the contest for various reasons. If you want to find out more, you can email me and I'll respond when I can. That would have been enough. Just want to know why I was disqualified and why I had to find out in such a cruel way. So it sounds like there was some kind of contest that Saro was doing, an art contest, I guess. And it's one of those things, VTubers have a lot of people who draw a lot of art for them. And in my opinion, I think it's almost the core and background of being a VTuber because you have all of these artists basically come behind and redrawing you in their style. And it's really cool. I don't know how that usually works. I don't know if their fans are just so big that all these people just want to draw pictures of them or if they pay these guys and they commission them and they're like, hey, thank you draw this for me. Thank you so much. I, I don't know how the whole thing works, but if you follow any VTuber, usually once or twice a day, they're retweeting all of this art that usually looks bomb from all these people drawing about it. I'm absolutely jealous of it. If you guys want to draw me some more Omni fan art, hashtag Omni fan art. If you want to keep drawing me, guys, reminder, draw me and I'll put you in the beginning of the videos, okay? Because I love that stuff. Anyway, here's the response. It's going to be hard for you guys to see, but I will read it out for you. It's just a very long picture. It's just, you know, <laughs> uh, vertically long. Uh, well, the post isn't on your Twitter unless you raged and removed it right after the art contest. Makes it hard for me to help you if you did. The only post I see about it is an over-the-shoulder view of you drawing a very small part of it. As part of the contest rules were to have it posted on Twitter. She said, this is my account. It also shows the contest discussion on the Discord server. I just want know the reason why I was disqualified and why I wasn't contacted about it. And I'm not alone in this. This this is another person who has no idea why they weren't including the competition. My guess is there's a lot of people who probably feel this way. Darius says, well, for years, if I had to guess the reason, the body and the gun style doesn't match the head at all. It goes from some perspective and anatomy confidence, except you blended two guns together at different perspectives, LOL, to some pretty big issues with the face. These are usually key signs of someone tracing or copying things. That person also didn't respect Saroy's design at all, giving her absolutely massive boobies. And when she said, thank you for your pain, I would like to know why Saray didn't include me in the competition and why I wasn't informed. Uh, and the Darius said, take this as your answer then. Jesus Christ, dude. So the mob was just like, hey, this is why. Now get out like a bodyguard. Like, hey, bro, look, they didn't like, she ain't like your art. This is probably why she didn't like your art. Use that as an answer instead. And then she said, is this what she told you? Why didn't anyone contact me beforehand with these allegations? Why was I not given a chance to respond? I'm not looking to dispute her decision. She has the right to disqualify anyone for any reason. I'm just asking to be treated fairly. Like who was in charge of dealing with the disqualifications and how was the contest even run? Which I understand and I feel if you spend all that time and energy trying to draw art for somebody and then you don't even get an answer as to what happened or why, like no explanation whatsoever after putting all this time and energy into it. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of effed up. Anyway, this tweet from Darius says, Saroy had the right to disqualify anyone for any reason that she wanted. She was in charge. It was her contest. And then Carol Rugg said, yes, that's what I said. In my case specifically, I would just like to know why and why I wasn't told before the contest. Darius said, at no point was it ever stated that people would be told the reason for disqualification. This is pretty standard to be honest. And then Carol Rugg said, can you help me bring this attention to her as there are other people who are upset? And then Darius just said, I'm done with this conversation. Damn. Dang, just freaking rude, bro. Like, you can't treat your fans like this, bro. Like, I mean, this is a moderator speaking on behalf of Sarah Ray, so not speaking on Sarah Ray's behalf. But from what I understand, actual YouTuber Sarah Ray had some similar exchanges with other people that looks uh, looks pretty rough. So yeah, this is the other tweet that you guys sent me from uh, Menti that says, seems like a lot of people are interested in my experience applying to being an editor for Sarah Ray. So here's the screenshots. Don't harass anyone, please. And again, guys here, don't harass anyone. Whoever we talk about here on this channel, don't don't be that person to go in. I had a person do that the other day, just, just FYI. We were talking about somebody and then they went to that person's tweet and started like replying. Like, yeah, I just came from Omni's video, man. Blah, blah, blah. Don't, don't, don't be a sussy baka, okay? Yes, I'm still saying sussy baka in 2022. Um, and if you're looking for an editor, don't tell them you could match their quality with anyone on Fiverr without even seeing their work. The conversation reads as follow. It's Minty at the top wave, doing wave and saying, hey, I'm messaging because I saw you were looking for uh, video editors. And then Sarue responded and said, uh, so I'm looking for someone who can do a video editing like YouTuber Captain Pro or the video editor of 39 Daff. And I'm looking for uh, someone who does watch my stream daily to understand the joke and the vibes of my streams. If you can't have these two things, then it's already a no. Minty replies and says, I love Daff's editing. I can definitely edit in a similar style. Let me find some example videos that would mesh well with what you're looking for. A little about me, I've been editing YouTube 
YouTube videos and films professionally for over seven years. And I've uh, worked for streamers in the past, both with the guidance from the streamer and independently, quote, some people like to be more or less involved in the process. You know how it is. I edit using Premiere Pro, After Effects, Audition, Photoshop, and DaVinci Resolve for color correction, color grading if necessary. Uh, I value open communication highly and I implement advice and adapt quickly. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Or if you'd like to know, I have an experience with something in particular, I'd be happy to discuss that. And then Saray just replies and says, too much text. I'm sorry, but I don't care. I need to see the work to approve it. <laughs> God dang, dog. That's so rough. Like, <laughs> I can see maybe if you were talking to somebody like who's a friend or somebody, somebody that you know, right? Like, and you guys have been talking and you're just kind of like, whatever, bro, just, you know, send it to me. You know, you got a close relationship, but somebody you don't even know and you're kind of just being like this about a job that they're trying to apply to is kind of, it's, it's kind of straightforward. It's kind of blunt. And it, you can't see it on there, but he says, no worries. I'm getting some examples for you now. And then she replied and said, thanks. And also this, because you haven't replied to this part, quote, or bolded. And I'm looking also for someone who would watch my stream daily to understand the joke and the vibes of the stream. Dreams, in which Minty had said, I could, yes. And then Saray say, nah, too late. Quote, you could. I'm looking for someone who already does. And then Minty said, no worries. I hope you find someone that fits well. And then she replies and says, I'm leaving my this opportunity to my followers to work with me. So if I wanted a random video editor, I can get one on any other website such as Fiverr. Okay. Obviously the vibe here. <laughs> She said, eh. <laughs> wrong. That was the wrong answer, bro. You need to be watching me for at least the, the past uh, several months. And you got to be a true diehard fan. And then I mean, after he said, no worries, I hope you find someone that fits uh, kind of going back and calling him a random video editor, like to explain it. I mean, she's explaining why, but it's just it's kind of harsh, right? Anyway, if you go down the thread, it looks like a lot of people were big baby rage mad about it and and basically jumping and dogpiling and adding their own receipts as well, some of their own conversations, and basically saying that this isn't abnormal from her. This person said, Jesus, so it seems that this is definitely not an isolated incident of her behavior. You're literally just listing your qualifications in a super compact manner. She just says, too long, I don't care like what? How do you treat people you're looking to work with like this? And somebody said, but wait, there's more. Saure really out here condoning the R word? What? Uh, and in all honesty, who gives a flying F about a word? So stop when she says, I say the R word on stream and other big streamers still do it too. Another VTuber replied and said, I wish I could say I was shocked since I saw a viewer more than a year ago enter her stream and asked, your art is so nice. Have you considered being a tattoo artist? And she responded with, think for a bit, dumbass. If I'm not doing tattoos right now, it means I don't No question mark, idiot, baka. <laughs> I don't know if this is like, is, is it part of her uh, character for her to be so rude and disrespectful? I mean, because if it is, then I guess it's like on par. Like if her character is to be an a-hole, then I guess she is on par uh, with it. But I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's character wise or if that's just her being mean on the outside. Quote, she kept mocking them and insulting them. So I unfollowed and never looked back. I'm so sorry she talked to you this way. And, and Guys, when situations like this happen, a lot of people come out the woodworks, either with receipts or basically reasons to explain why they didn't like them. Like if I got canceled, right, then I would have like a bunch of people in there be like, I never liked Omni anyway. Never liked that man. Garbage. You know, you might watch my videos. I never liked him anyway. I knew he was sus. I knew he was garbage. You know, stuff like that happens. So that also happens in this, especially if you're a big person. But it looks like a lot of people are explaining their just, you know, distaste. Uh, with this uh, VTuber. So finally, to wrap it up, uh, Sarue on her actual official Twitter made this uh, response to basically what had happened. She said this, let's see her side of the story. Even though the issue between my mod and the artist was solely private, I'm taking this all as a way to improve our relations with you. Going forward, we will both interact more positively with the community and be more conscious of our actions. I've also spoken with Darius privately and he acknowledged and apologized for the inconsiderate way he treated the artist. The contest was meant to be a fun opportunity to engage with the community and get your art out there for every want to see and potentially win some pretty good prizes. I took my uh, time to go through nearly all the other submissions and give feedback on them and had a great time with my viewers. However, I still failed to execute it to the best of my ability and I ended up hurting a number of people. For this, I am very sorry as I love my community and fellow artists. As stated in my last tweets, for any future contests, we will have new guidelines to better meet the concerns that you have all voiced. Still, this issue and many of the responses hurt me deeply and it feels as though many people forget that we are human on the other side of the screen. It is not okay to send death threats or other harassment. Sure, I agree that it is not okay to send death threats or other harassments, um, but you know, 
I'm not going to say what I'm going to say, but you know what I want to say. We all make mistakes, but it's important to grow and learn from them. So I like us all to be able to move on and chase new opportunities together. So yeah, guys, that's the situation that's happened with this VTuber, uh, Sour Ray. She had 250,000 followers on Twitter. I'm sure she will bounce back. And to be honest, like in terms of things that I've seen on this show, on this channel, which you guys and I've talked about, this has not been one of the most heinous crimes. Just, I guess, an example of her just being rude in the background with people. But I've, I've seen much worse. It's kind of probably going to be one of those things that blows over for a long time. I, I'm not surprised by this behavior, by the way. I mean, like, a lot of people idolize a lot of these VTubers and just people in general. But behind back doors, it usually can be garbage to do butter in terms of personality or whatever. I don't think this is a perfect reflection or example of who Sarue is. Just to be completely fair and be completely neutral, I do not think that this interaction defines who she is. But at the same time, like, I mean, I, I don't think I would talk to somebody like at that specific type of level. That was kind of rough. That was kind of harsh. It's kind of mean. And uh, I mean, I think also when you become really big, a lot of these people who be blowing up or become really big or become really successful, they get a little bit, um, they lose their humility, I feel like, you know, like they, they, they blow up, they're successful. And then they start, you know, you know how it is. They start getting a big head sometimes. This feels like one of those things where you're taking for granted what's being offered to you. And you got to be very careful with that, especially if people start exposing. You got to love everybody, whether they have one follower or a thousand followers, whether they draw you a stick figure of an art or they draw you a massive anime hentai version of it whichever one it is man you gotta um keep that love equal amongst all of them but yeah that's the drama let me know how you guys feel about sorrow let me know if there was any information that i missed and if i had any takes that were wrong hey hit me up too as well i'll, I'll correct myself in the future but that's what's going on with this situation all right guys uh we have this situation going on about an esports tiktok account that was really big and affected my boy ludwig i don't know exactly what happened i didn't follow it all the way uh trenton tober said oh i've been waiting for this one and a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about it, it was it was wild it was pretty wild said so the esports tiktok account was posting streamers clips without asking the streamer first and when one of ludwig's editors called them out on it they blocked him and called him a nobody wait a minute that don't make, i don't think that's what happened <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone blocked Ludwig and called him a nobody. I think there was another person involved. Maybe I think Ludwig's editor or something like that. But let me let me see if I can get into it. There's a video linked here. It said, in Twitch employees stole my work and then blocked me, which I think is a video from uh, Ludwig, which we'll watch some clips. But let me see if I get some more context that happened on Twitter, because I know there was an exchange that happened there privately or personally or publicly. So I think this is close to where it actually began. Uh, Radstats, who I believe is in charge of... Uh, Ludwig's TikTok account said, nah, uh, Bishop Christian, Bishop, Cr wait a minute. Oh, B Christian is involved with this. Oh no. Oh no. Not Christian. And esports. like Christian was, um, Thunder Gaming involved with that kind of situation. Man, my man's is always getting involved in something. I hope, hope he wasn't too deep with this. He said, you don't just get to steal my work as well as numerous other creators, ignore all my attempts to talk to you and then block me for calling you out again. You work for Twitch and you knowingly steal content. How are you not embarrassed? And the pictures here show Christian Bishop has blocked you, followed by uh, Esports has blocked you, followed by uh, looks like a post that said paid gig looking for a tiktok creator mastermind genius to contribute to the esports account referrals would be appreciated thank you that was uh not too long ago and then uh another tweet that says on it we'll put a new watermark credit policy in place in which rasta says proper crediting is great but i think it would have would be leagues better to avoid reposting fully edited content made for others creators without direct permission because even if the norm became crediting you'd still be promoting off someone else's paid work and no cost so it sounds like what was happening was that Radstads was making compilations and clips and editing stuff and videos for Ludwig and then whoever was in charge of the esports account, who I don't think was Christian Bishop. I think, I mean, in terms of, he, he might be the owner, but I think he wasn't the person who was actually putting the clips in. But whoever was doing this thing, basically, was basically taking someone else's edited work and then using it for their own TikToks to highlight YouTubers. And one of those YouTubers just happened to have been Ludwig. Anyway, the follow-up tweet to this right after that said, it actually nuts to me that the head of the digital esports uh, at Kendrick's is doubling down internally as well? Question mark? Question mark? If you want me to list all the issues with the content theft and easy solutions, you can always shoot me a DM instead of calling me an effing 
nobody. So that's who they were calling. It was an effing nobody. And it looks like there was a conversation that's going on between, well, I don't know who this is. It got blocked out and maybe they just leaked it, but it said Kendrick's hold on followed by, do we delete the TikToks? Cause I'm like, I don't want to get fired or anything. I thought this was safe to do. Uh, and then Kendrick said, no, 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 no. I'm chatting with Christian. Okay. So, and then it says the tag is right. And everything for Ludwig's talk. I think he's mad. It just went viral without them getting any money out of it or something. I assume Ludwig's manager. And then he said, I'm pretty sure it's cause he's mad. He said, yeah, Sag, let me know what to do when y'all are done talking. I can delete that talk. And then Kendrick said, you are good. Don't delete. We're going to make an overlay so you can use tag in the videos as well. I don't know what that means. Let him go. He's an effing nobody. Oof, man, man, bro. It, it always comes up and catches with you, bro. When, when you start being disrespectful behind closed doors or being mean or rude, your true character starts leaking out, bro. Oh, God. Caught in eight. Okay, well, this picture looks like 48p. Call in 48p. Follow up account that said me when I get called out and they don't want to face accountability. And it looks like Kendrick's, uh, they, they uh, protected their tweets. I don't know if it's still protected. I can check for y'all. Yep, it's still protected. Head of digital esports, DE consultant. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it looks like esports made an, an apology tweet. Man, this is the second brand that we've seen, bro. At first was our teaching builds and that whole situation. And now we got another one. Another Twitter apology. What happened? Apology says, we messed up. Since last November, we have been focused on tagging original creators whose content we shared on TikTok. That wasn't enough. I think I think what had happened was that the whoever was doing the whole editing and stuff for TikToks was might have been using other people's content or using other people's clips without permission or using other people's edited clips without permission. I guess this is what uh, basically drove this one. It said, in response to the fair criticism we've received today, we have taken down all content, including all of our original content from TikTok. God dang. They deleted their entire channel. They took away all of the content, dude. We will only return to TikTok when we are confident we can meet the high standards of uh, original content we hold ourselves to, to an esports GG. We are without reservation, deeply sorry. Wow. Wait, I didn't know all of that was necessary. Just just, just take down the, 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 the TikTok where I guess this specific event had happened. I mean, and then for all the rest of them, you can just reach out to people and ask if it's okay to use their clips. I feel like, if, if it's clips, right, it's public information on, on twitch.tv, those clips are public, right? So it's like, unless I'm missing something, all you just need to do is ask permission if you feel like you need to do that, I, I guess, unless, I think the only thing would be here is that if a lot of the TikToks were basically using other people's remade content or republished content and they were republishing edited content, then yeah, then I can understand if it's being taken down for that reason. And Christian replied and said, I'm sorry to Radstats and to any creators impacted by our TikTok posts. I am responsible for our policies. You were right to call us out when they fell short, which is not making Christian look good because apparently at one point in time, he had already blocked uh, Radstats in the past. It's just, ah. Uh, Man, <laughs> guys, here's Ludwig's video. A Twitch employee stole my work, then blocked me. Six minutes, 50 seconds. You guys can come to his channel, Muggle Mail, where he talks about a lot of commentary and, and things and news that's also happening as well. And uh, yeah, let me just see, watch a little bit of what it is uh, that he has to say or how he felt about it or what the situation was for him. I'm up on my timeline and I feel like I had to talk about it because uh, it involves one of my employees in, in Good Buds, Radstads. If you don't know Radstads, and it's all the TikToks and YouTube shorts and actually is the person credited with making my most popular video ever. It's not shake, it's not polite, it's not something I edited. It was him editing me reacting to Schlatt banning everybody. It has 20 million views. Jesus uh, So an absolute Christ. God. Uh, and he tweeted out like a few months ago at esports, which if you don't know is just a company yeah. that does esports. It's kind of like what a venture capitalist group would create if they had no fucking clue what esports was, <laughs> but wanted to make money from it. All right. Okay. 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 I hear you, Ludwig. Let's go. Continue. Anyway, uh, probably a business hemorrhaging money. He tweeted, yo, at esports, is there any reason you as a verified brand account are shamelessly ripping off all the content on your TikTok from other accounts creators, like literally just downloading and reposting TikToks with a watermark removed and improper tagging? Uh, and and mm. then this is the proof of it at the moment. And it's, it's the esports account. And it is just a bunch of TikToks. And it is specifically TikToks edited for my TikTok. Now, I want to clarify, it. I don't mind people using my clips. Gotcha. I feel like it's it's fine. Uh, it's whatever it happens. I, I watch clips too. And 
and like re so okay it's, it's basically essentially exactly what we thought it has no issue you can use clips twitch clips are public information it's like a freaking library of clips okay it's free content usually i don't think anyone asks you to be like hey don't use my clips when it's out there in public information it's edited clips that were being uploaded and now i'm just i don't know if the rest of the clips on the esports channel was done in the same way um or not but that seems to be what the case is change won't come from you guys going down to their level it is a hundred percent okay to voice concerns for yeah. things that people do that are bad. Yeah. But the worst thing you could ever do is go down to someone else's level and start just like name calling and yeah. talking shit, not based off of the actions they do, but like who they are. So I think anyone is in the right to say, hey, you guys are being dumb for the decisions you have made as a company and talk super disrespectfully internally and aren't handling this well. But I want to make sure that nobody from me is going around talking shit or or doing like terrible things that that other creators communities have done in the past and been I appreciate that from Ludwig. I I really appreciate that from Ludwig. You guys know when it comes to <laughs> certain uh content creators man if you don't if you don't enforce that if you don't take a minute or two just be like hey guys by the way just because I'm frustrated or annoyed or mad that does not mean that I need y'all to go into people's DMs or sending threats or making insults like handle yourself okay we're 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 all professional here we're good here you can be pissed off about this specific action but don't come at anyone's throats personally like from person to person or insult you know i i respect that but yeah guys that's the situation that happened with ludwig esports the uh the tiktok is officially gone with all of its uh clips i don't know if they're going to come back with more clips or what's going to be the future for the esports tiktok or all of that in general but that's the drama that went down let me know how you guys feel about it and if i missed anything let me know but i think that's basically the tldr of it but all right guys that's all i have for today's video do me a favor if you made it to the end of the video drop a like subscribe if you guys haven't already i'm gonna try to get another video out for you guys this weekend i i need some edit <laughs> i'm about to say i need some editors though i don't know I don't know if I need some editors. I'm, I'm comfortable with what I'm doing right now, and I just want to start making some uh, new content soon. And then once I feel comfortable with the flow chart, then I'll start seeing if I can spice it up for you guys, make it a little bit a little pretty. But I kind of like it being just kind of roughed up. I kind of like the scuffed version of our videos. I don't know. I might not even do that and get editors anyway. But yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, next uh, video will probably be next Monday in terms of news. And then you'll see you might get some other stuff in your subscription feed. So hit the bell button just in case you guys want to see the other stuff. I love y'all. I'll hit you up later. Take it easy. Stay safe in them streets because them streets ain't safe. And uh, brush your teeth because I can smell your breath from across the screen. I love y'all. Take it easy. Peace.